we're going to play a game. Uh, this game, if you want to make like a, um, a little subheading, if you want, this is called the $10 bet. It's actually a thing you can, you can Google. It's actually a really interesting thought experiment for other reasons, but here's the way the bet works. I meet you on the street. We've never like interacted before. There's been no interaction. And I say to you, hey, let's flip a coin. In fact, let's get said coin out. I'm going to flip a coin, right? And you get to call it. And when we reveal it, right, if you win, it's called the $10 bet because I'll just give you 10 bucks. That's it, right? Not a bad deal. So this is option one. If you call it successfully, you get 10 bucks, okay? However, if I flip, you call it, and you're wrong, remember, we've, we've not interacted before, right? If you're wrong, you have to give me two bucks, okay? So let me say this one more time. If you win, you call it successfully, I'll give you 10. If you lose, you have to give me two. Now, I just, it's actually not important to the thing we're going to learn, but just out of curiosity, remember, like, this is $2 that you had beforehand. Have we got someone? Oh, yes. Let's hit pause. He's going to be like, what's going on here? Okay. <laughs> Who's gambling? Hello, who are you after? Um, A2A. Mm-hmm. Aiden? Aiden? Uh, this looks like now. Yeah, can you see Miss Adebo, please? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it might be something else, who knows. Okay. Everyone's like, really? Aiden of all people? Anyway. Okay, so. Oh, I'm doing this because my thing is dying. Actually, I can probably lose that now. All right, where was I? Um, oh, that's right. <laughs> $10, $2. Now, keep in mind, right, before you play this game, you don't have to play. You don't have to play. It's up to you whether you want to. And remember, you stand to lose, right? If you want, you can just walk away. Walk away, no cost to you, it's really your choice. Now, just out of curiosity, how many of you would play the game? Hands up. Remember, you risk just losing $2, okay? It's like half of you. Would, would play, would play. Oh, more of you, okay. There we go. All right, thank you, hands down. Now, what I, lo I love is, a bunch of you are a bit like me. You're like, yeah, I know I stand to gain this, but I, I don't want to lose my two bucks, right? Like. Uh, this is actually a psychological effect they call loss aversion, that losing something feels disproportionately more like painful than gaining something even when it's much larger. Anyway, you can look that up later if you like uh, under the $10 bet. Now, here's what I want to understand. It sounds like this is a pretty good deal, right? But I want to know how good a deal is it? Because the whole question of probability is about equipping us to make good choices. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I play? Should I not? How long should I play for? Things like that. So do me a favor, underneath the $10 bet, draw for me a table. And you can see I've got a new row, an extra row on my table. And I'm going to fill it out in a minute. So as usual, we're going to have our x up here. The discrete random variable that we're interested in here, obviously, is how much do you make, right? Now, if you win, you know you get $10. But if you lose, if you call it wrong, how would we say this mathematically? Because you don't win $2, you would lose, you'd minus. So let's call this negative $2. These are the two options. Discrete random variables, they don't have to be whole numbers, they don't have to be positive numbers. So long as you know the specific values, it's still a discrete random variable. All right, we're flipping a coin. Let's just assume I have not rigged it. So down here, when we say our probability, that our particular, uh, our discrete random variable will equal these particular values, what are we going to have for each? Not a trick question. Flip in a coin. One. It's one out of two. And one out of two. What did we call this before when you've got a probability distribution? And so, yeah, it's uniform. All of the probabilities are equal. And of course, like we saw before, a half plus a half, you total to one. Now, what's this bottom row for? Well, what I want to have a think about is, if we played this game over and over and over again, obviously you wouldn't expect to win every single time. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some, right? So what I want to get a handle on is, as we play this game repeatedly, 
how much are you likely to win? Like this game is obviously in your favor rather than mine, but how much? Here's the way we're going to do it. Remember I mentioned before that sometimes, just for shorthand, we uh, don't use the full notation for this. We just use a little p, and uh, it's like function notation. Okay. Now, in this bottom row, this extra row, I want us to take the discrete random variable and then multiply it by the chance that we get it. So in this case, it's x times p of x. And then I'm just going to multiply down the columns. Okay. So $10 times a half is 5 bucks. And negative 2 times a half is negative 1. OK, now I'm going to use that notation that we saw before. <laughs> Sorry that I have to do this, but this is the notation. We saw earlier that the sum of all the probabilities equals to 1, right? Every probability distribution is like this if it's complete. But now down here, I want to work out the sum of, not the probabilities, that's boring and the same, it's the probabilities times the outcome that happens. So this is x, that's the outcome, and there's the probability. Now when you add all these up, I mean there's only two of them, what do you get? Four dollars. Let's think about this for a minute, okay? This idea here is not something that's possible to happen on any individual game, because these are the two possibilities on any individual game. But if you play over and over and over again, what you should expect to happen is each round you ought to be ahead by $4, right? Now, that might seem a bit weird and counterintuitive, so let me try and illustrate this. What you can see we've got here, just, just take in the spreadsheet, because I set some of this up last night so that we could do this together, okay? I've got two options, 10 and negative 2. And then I've imagined playing this game 10 times with you, over and over and over again. And you can see, I'm about to randomize it actually, um, a different thing happens every time. Either you win or you lose. Okay? Now, you can see in this particular instance, I've just added up this entire column. And if you put together your wins in this case, you won six times and you lost four times. So that's why 60 minus 8 gives you the 52. Does this make sense? Okay, now let me just, I think I might be able to reach rid of my cable. Let's hope I don't break the HDMI. There we go. Now, if you've never played with random numbers before in Excel, the way it works is anytime you change a cell, like so, you get a new generated thing, right? Still 10 games, and it's still randomly doing this, but it looks like for this particular round of 10, sorry, you had worse luck than before. You only made $28. I mean, as we said before, yeah, still good, still good, right? I'm still coming out ahead. Uh, part of the point of this is, if you've got better odds, even if sometimes you lose, sometimes you lose a lot of times, but in some it's worth it, right? And I can do this again and again and again, and you can see what's happening, right? And one of the strengths of Excel is that you can say, you know what, I don't want to just do it 10 times. How many times would you like to do it? Well, I can imagine a whole bunch of you playing this game over and over again, 10 times each. And now we can see the outcome overall. Now, take this in for a minute. Sorry, this is slightly in the way for some of you. Have a look at what's going on. Let's imagine each column is one of you. And you're playing 10 games with me. Some of you do really, really well, right? Have a look at, um, see this column in here? Whoa, this person lost once, and then they won nine times in a row. And you're like, really? Would that happen? Answer, if you play enough games, yes, it absolutely will happen. In the same way, some of you have some pretty rotten luck. I like this person who wins once and it's like, yeah, and then you, you lose seven times in a row. Well, this is like the opposite to that other person there who had really good luck. Okay? Now, just have a look across all of these different options. Can you see they're kind of all within a, a range? right? Uh, obviously, what's the maximum? After playing 10 games, what's the maximum you could possibly win? $100, right? And the maximum you could possibly lose is $20, negative 20, right? And you can see these all kind of are in the range. But what I can do is I can say, wait a second, if I expect that each round, uh, each of the 10 games, right, I should be ahead by $4. If you play this 10 times, what ought you to anticipate or expect, roughly? Should be about $40. Now, watch this, right? Um, down here, I've got this other cell that says the average one. So I'm imagining each column is a person, and now what I'm going to do is I've actually already done this calculation, I'm just going to make it visible. I'm going to take the average of all of the people after playing 10 games, right? 
and I get this. Now, this is random, right? It's truly random. If I do this again, remember what I told you about random numbers? If I just change one number like that, I've got a whole new set of 10 games for each person, right? And I can do this again, and again, and again, and again. But the key thing is that you can see we're always around this range. It should be different because remember these are random, random right? So there's this unpredictably built in. But I can know I expect this to happen. Well, I mean, I expect it 10 times, hence that's why we're around 40. Does that make sense? This thing here, see this? Uh, different color. This thing here that we did when we added up, we added up all of the different outcomes multiplied by their respective probabilities. When you do all of that, remember how I said like, this is what you expect to happen. Well, we call it the expected value. The expected value is what happens when you add up all of these things. Okay. Now, keep in mind, right, what you're adding up is actually kind of like averaging out everything that happens. And so because you're sort of averaging out, this is what we call a weighted mean. Weighted mean. Think about this as if these were like assessment tasks, right? You're like, oh, I did really well in this assessment task, and I did really badly in this assessment task. Well, then we weight them, right? We're like, this is worth this much, this is worth that much. So this is kind of like how much they're worth, how much they're weighted. Suppose we were not flipping coins. Suppose we were rolling dice, right? And I said, okay, um, if you roll a six, you win. And if you don't roll a six, you lose. This is a different game now, isn't it? Right? And we can multiply down and we can work out the expected value, right? By the way, let's just do that. 10 times a 6, what's that going to be? You can give it to me in dollars and cents. Give it to me in two decimal places. What have I got? A dollar 67, right? And then over here, you got negative 2, but it's weighted much more heavily because it's so much more likely to happen. Are you following? Okay. So in this case, what am I going to get? It's negative 2 times 5 over 6. What do you get? Also, this. Actually, that should make sense because it's 2 times 5, right? So if I were to play this game again and I would say, oh, what's my expected value? You ought to expect to basically come out in the wash. Um, a trained professional would have prepared a spreadsheet in advance for this one, but I just thought of doing it on the spot, so I don't have one, sorry. But I leave to you to work out. It's actually quite easy to get Excel to do this, okay? Now, all this stuff that I just said about it being um, a mean, an average, um, the idea of it being a weighted mean means that we have two different ways to notate this same idea. I know you've been getting the, um, the rhythm of this, that often we have different ways to write the same thing. So to say expected value, we use a big E, E for expected. Um, the value expected, expected value of this particular um, discrete random variable. But then, different notation, same thing. Because it's a mean, remember how we use the Greek letter S for sigma, for sum? Uh, we use the Greek letter M. Does anyone know what the Greek letter for M is? It's a weird one. You've probably never encountered it before. It looks like this. It's like a U, but with like an extra tail on the front. This is mu, right? That's how you pronounce it. The Greek letter mu corresponds to the English letter M for mean, okay? Don't freak out. I know it looks weird, but all of these things are different ways of talking about the same idea. Adding up all of these different things, the outcome times its probability. Is that okay?